we're buying things that other people weren't able to handle. So in the nature of every day, you're doing stuff that's hard. And that's what we do. To your point, you gotta really have a vision for this thing and you gotta, you gotta be passionate about it and sell it. I think that we call it sweat equity. Everyone thinks, oh, how am I gonna start at zero? You can start with zero uh, if you have a vision. Big picture before you throw money into something, you know, what, what are the boxes you gotta check off? Again, that vision and that clarity. You must have clarity how if I make movement in this business widget or service, it should, if I follow this conservative plan, make money for, for my partners, for myself. Hi, and welcome to Common Denominator, a podcast about growth, mindset, and entrepreneurship. I'm Dave Azer, and if I'm sitting here, that must mean that Moshe Popak is sitting right there, the host in the guest chair. Thanks again for letting me hang with you. How are you, my man? Doing well, Dave, doing well. It's, uh, it's always great, I always say, whenever I get to sit in the guest chair, it's great to take a break and, uh, and answer, answer questions that, pe that people have, try to give some solid advice. Yeah, that's what we have yeah. here. We, we posted online that you were gonna be guesting on your own show, and we wanted people to have questions for you, and we've got 15 of them by my count, combination of real estate and business and some family stuff. So you're, uh, you're about to answer some viewer questions. Sure, and I did not get a sneak peek. So. No, you've not seen these. He's going yeah. in blind. Uh, all right, so here we go. Th this one was funny because uh, the question is, do you have a hard money guy? And I, as a layman, you know, I didn't, I wasn't sure what hard money guy meant. I thought it was like a mafia thing. <laughs> so I had to look it up. So for people who may not know what a hard money guy is, it's defined as, uh, this is for real estate, a hard money lender is generally a person or a group of investors who loan money for real estate primarily a short-term bridge loans that's secured by the property. So do you have a hard money guy? <laughs> so uh, I all we, all we call them debt funds if it's, if it's a lot of money. But the hard, the hard money guys, so this is right, the typical banks, they could be like, like Citibank or J.P. Morgan Chase or things like banks like that. But then there's basically, it's basically a private lenders that look to make it as a business, to lend money as a business. Um, and, and I do, I don't typically borrow from them because as you grow as a, as a sponsor, right, as a real estate owner, you have a track record, you're able to go to, to, uh, to different banks. And I, and I prefer to actually use a mortgage broker. I pay him a fee mm -hmm. and he takes my package. Let's say I'm buying a property, I'm refinancing a property. He presents it to many different lenders, and we take the best offer. That's where we are now. But I do know people that do lend. Maybe nowadays it's 12 to maybe 17% interest, which is very high. You want to obviously pay the least amount of interest. Right. Right. So, so the answer is the answer is yes, <laughs> uh, but I prefer to go to a bank. So if, if somebody were to prefer the other way, um, you just mentioned the interest, but what, what would be some advantages of, of doing the hard money guy? So what I, what I, what I love about the, the, the timing of close, they just run the title that there's no liens on the property and that this um, owner of this property has the ability to sell it, um, I mean to, to, to um, encumber it with a loan, and, uh, and it's usually it could be even as quick as 10 days. And uh, so sometimes you need a, you need the cash fast, so you're able to. That's 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 the major advantage, and then also when banks are, uh, they call it pens down, when they're not uh, lending money, and sometimes nowadays for certain type of assets and certain sponsors they're not lending money nowadays. So it's good, I guess. The takeaway is it's good to have different options because right. every every scenario has different pitfalls and timing mechanisms and such. And if you're starting, and if you're starting out, most of the time you do have to go to a hard money, a private lender because you don't have track record. Um, but if you believe that you're buying it cheap enough, and you're going to be in and out, and you're going to flip the deal within a year, uh, and you're going to still make profit, paying still paying 15% interest because you're buying it 50 cents in the dollar, then you then you then you take that money. Yeah. Well, there you go. Uh, okay. So for people who don't know, your portfolio is largely multifamily. Uh, so this question is 
is relevant to that. How do you find tenants for rental properties? So the great thing about the internet, right? Um, we pay um, apartments.com and different websites that specialize in in advertising because people, let's just say in Florida, it's a thousand people moving to Florida every single day, net migration. So people, the demand, the demand is there. We mainly deal in workforce housing. And so, um, so there's just, it just happens to be there's a lot of there's a, there's a lot of people looking 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 to to rent, and so what we just go and we pay a fee a monthly fee to advertise mm-hmm. on on the different uh, websites. There are specific websites, mainly like Apartments.com and other. other so, ones. Uh, just top of my head, follow up to that. What scares you from a potential renter? You've been at this a long time. You've seen the red flags, the warning signs. Somebody wants to live in one of your buildings. You see their application. What are you looking for? What are the red flags? So you want to you wanna run their credit, and you want to – because it depends on the state also. There are a lot of states that are very pro um, – and it's not necessarily a bad thing, but very pro-tenant – but sometimes you have a bad apple. Um, I know in New York, uh, I have uh, friends that own buildings in New York and family that owns buildings in New York. And through maneuvering of the law, they can stay rent-free for almost two years, maybe more, right? Um, in Florida, it's less. Uh, uh, they, you know, you sign a contract as an adult, right? I'm gonna pay the rent. Right. Uh, I try my best. I don't get it perfect, but I try my best to provide a safe, um, clean, uh, you know, workforce housing units. That's that's what I we try to do. Um, again, we don't get it perfect every time, but um, but if we're doing that, then it should be reciprocated, and we should hopefully get paid the rent. And that's why they have uh, landlord tenant court, and there's there's disputes. You know, we have systems to, uh, to deal with that. Um, so at this point, not too much fear, uh, per se. I don't, um, I don't necessarily have, have, yeah. have, have fears of it. And it's just sort of the cost of doing business, right? Yeah. Is that every now and again, you're going to run into a situation like this. Correct. Yeah. Um, this, is a, this is a good one for people just starting out. How to manage risk without big cash reserves when starting in real estate. Maybe you need a hard money guy. Well, well, to manage risk, you got to really the way that the way to mitigate the risk is to uh, spend the time, research, research, due diligence. You got to buy really, really, really cheap. In other words, the market's at a dollar, and you're buying for fifty cents. If you buy for fifty cents, like a lot of people would ask me, like how I go ahead and buy. We have assets in seven states. How do you manage in other states? How do you do that? Um, so line items for literally theft, line item for mismanagement. So when you're starting out, you're a novice, you're a beginner. 100% of the time, you're going to make mistakes. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's learning opportunities. but um, So that's why you have, to, you have to buy cheap. And the way really you can do that is we had a guest on the other day. You have to maybe get something vacant, something with a story, something run down, but you know that you can bring a team and the kitchen's broken, you could fix the kitchen, you could fix the bathrooms, and you could deal with that. But um, you have to have be able to see something that other people don't see um, and, uh, and, and buying cheap. It's an interesting. You mentioned that you have properties in seven states. I'm wondering if somebody is new at this. I think a lot of business owners have a tendency to micromanage. They want to be in charge of every detail. So what would your advice be, in addition to what you just said, uh, if somebody were to buy anything, a home, um, office building, anything, anywhere that's not, you know, they've got to travel to, how do you not have these sleepless nights where you're constantly worried about the property that you can't go check? Um, well, you have to, it all comes back to the setup, the strategy. If you buy extremely cheap, 
um, there will be lawsuits, possibly. There will be, uh, again, theft or mismanagement, stuff like that. Damage. And damage. And, and that is part the cost of doing business. So the alternative is to do nothing. Right. Right? I always say that. Okay, do nothing. Ten years pass, you've done nothing. One year, two year, five year, ten year. Nothing. Or calculate risk because nobody's going to do it for you. And then you jump. And then you do it. Um, and even if you lose, you've learned a lot. And learned a lot, then, then you do it again. Eventually, you get it right. Yeah. And, and to that point, I'm going to go out of order, but there's a question here about real estate fails. And if you could share a story of an unsuccessful deal, I think that dovetails nicely with what you were just saying, that even if you have an unsuccessful deal and it's a fail, there's probably something still to learn. There's definitely something to learn and to take from it. So can you give us a story from your journey? Sure. I, um, I, bought, I, I, I bought a building um, in Vero Beach in Florida, and uh, it was 50% occupied. And I said, okay, we'll be able to fill it. But what happened? COVID happened. Uh, it was an office building, and... Um, and I was going to dump it for cheap. But what happened? The lesson that I learned is that if you had a certain theory, if you have staying power, so I, I lost in the short term, burning cash, you know, we're not covering debt, burning, burning, burning. But eventually, if you hold it, if you have staying power, like now, uh, COVID's over and now we're seeing tenants and it will be profitable. It just took a few extra years. Um, so that's why I'm not a big fan of, you could do some flipping, but to build wealth and scale, staying power and reserves because there's always things that are going to come up. You just, you know, you've hosted so many shows that you've become a master at segueing even when you don't know what the questions are. <laughs> because that's a great segue to the question of how much do you really need to start in real estate yourself and you're talking about having reserves. So somebody wants to start, I don't know, is there a, an empirical number? Is there a is, is there data like I have X amount in my bank account, I'm ready to go or what? It doesn't everybody thinks about the money. I've told this to my kids, and I've seen it. You can do very well in real estate if you're willing um, to take the risk. You can even take, put a deposit down on a contract for five thousand dollars. Let's just say the property's run down. You know, it's uh, the if it wasn't run down, it'd be worth five hundred thousand. But you're able to pay three hundred thousand dollars for this property. Um, it's a good area, and. It always comes down to, uh, you know, the close start with the closest friends and family. I have this property. You do a beautiful package. It doesn't cost a lot of money. But do the homework. Do the work. I'm going to buy this for three hundred. I'm going to put in fifty grand into this property. Okay. All the comparables and all that's free information are showing five hundred thousand. Okay. We take a hard money loan because banks are not lending now. Right. Within one year, we'll be in, we'll be out. But I need, let's just say, a deposit down. I need a hundred grand. You take five grand, five guys, twenty grand each. Five of your buddies, give me twenty grand. Let's do this. We're going to do it, and you split the profit fifty-fifty. Just the math for a second. You borrow two fifty. It costs you fifteen percent. So it's thirty-seven and a half thousand of interest. You pay them back, let's just say, in a year. Okay. So now, with closing costs, you're in about four hundred grand. Now your friends have given you a hundred grand, so you're all in about four hundred grand, right? You sell the property for five hundred grand. You've made a hundred thousand dollars of profit, and you've had a deal with them. You put a contract, an operating agreement. Half the profit goes to you, investor. Half will go to me. So. On their hundred grand, they made fifty grand, fifty thousand dollars, which is fifty percent on their money. And you know what you have now? You have fifty grand in your pocket. And you know what that fifty grand does? It gives you five grand deposits times ten more homes. Mm. Boom, boom, boom. Roll, roll. And it gives roll. you some swagger. 
right? Because right. you crushed it right out of the box. You can do this. Right. What I what I took from that answer, I, mean, I took a lot of things. But one of the things I was thinking about was, yeah, you're going to go to soft landing places. You're going to go to friends. You're going to go to family. That's great. But still, they need to see the vision. You can't just be like, hey, we're family. Trust me. Give me your money. So, right, like I think even if you're not an expert and didn't go to real estate school and you're figuring out as you go, to your point, you gotta really have a vision for this thing, and you gotta you gotta be passionate about it and sell it. Because even if the people love you, they're not gonna give you a ton of money unless you feel like you're unless you know that you're gonna make it. Right. I think that we call it sweat equity. Everyone thinks, oh, how am I gonna start? I have zero. You can start with zero uh, if you have a vision. Everything is and real estate, um, as flipping, I consider it just like a regular business, which means it's either a service or a widget. And you're using, like this bottle of water, like you're using this piece of real estate, I'm gonna do this, this is my business plan, and I'm gonna sell it for that, and we're gonna make a profit, and we're gonna be partners. No, uh, Investors will say, no, no, right. no, no, yes, no, no. But you also have to kind of love, first of all, have resilience and grit, that you don't care about being rejected, which is tough, right? Which is tough. You have to learn that if you want to have success, and then, um, and then, and then, if you don't know how to write a business plan, is free, uh, you know, uh, information on YouTube or like yeah, videos. for sure. And I think show you. And the point about resilience is, you're gonna get no in any career. Any like, there's no, there's no easy career. They're all tough. So you better before you. Do anything. You better be okay. I was on TV. That's like constant nose. That's constant people picking on you and people commenting about everything about it. Like you got to develop some thick skin. Uh, so I, I feel you on that one. Okay. So uh, let's get to some more viewer questions. Looking ahead, what trends do you anticipate shaping the multifamily real estate market? And how do you plan to adopt your business strategy accordingly? I, I understand that um, there's a deep need. Let's just take Florida, for example. I know there's University of Florida has a free publication that looks at the needs of housing throughout the state of Florida. There's 23 million people in Florida. I know there's a thousand people every single day net migration into Florida. Okay, Supply and demand basics. So I also know that it's a minimum of $300,000 between land costs building costs and then architecture and financing costs of $300,000, right? It's $300,000. So so unless something major shift on the federal government side or the state side, uh, I believe that workforce housing um, will continue to have a strong demand because more so, more so than the luxury space, if you're in a good economy, yes, luxury, you know, will crush in any, you know, in the major areas, major urban areas. Uh, but um, but if you want, I like slow and steady. I always call myself like the turtle, boom, slow and steady. Uh, but I see people need a place to live, mm -hmm. and that's just that's not going to change. That doesn't seem All like right. it's going to change, and you have inflation, real estate in general. Uh, goes together with inflation at least over the past hundred years. So my grandfather used to say, like real estate, uh, you know, it goes up like, right, it's like like three percent, and uh, and if you use a little bit of leverage, just doing the numbers again, if you buy it for a dollar, and you take a loan for seven, seventy percent of that dollar, and you put down thirty percent, and the dollar goes now up by three percent a year, a dollar oh three, mm -hmm. and you've put down thirty cents. So you've just made an extra three cents on the 30 cents you put down. You made 10% on your money. What's wrong with making 10% on your money? Not That's without any free cash flow. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, listening to you answer all these questions, and this is kind of the end of the real estate portion of, of, this, of this interview, uh, but I'm, I'm just wondering, is this easy for you now? Hmm. Is real estate easy for you? I still today, the level... I am now, a lot of people deal with a lot of problems. I still tell my guys, uh, give me the worst of the stuff 
Um, uh, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it's easy. I'm I'm used to it, uh, but I still deal with problem solving and the problems. I'm more efficient with solving them, uh, but they're bigger. They're they're bigger, um, but that comes slow and steady. You have to build your skin. Yeah. Build your skin over time. Um, and you like the process. Right. I like challenges. Yeah. We, in our nature, our company, every single asset that we buy, other management companies and other property owners, unfortunately, have, because we usually buy foreclosures or distressed stuff, we're buying things that other people weren't able to handle. So in the nature of every day, you're doing stuff that's hard. And that's what we do, right? So I'm not like surprised, oh my gosh, like, you know, this crazy thing happened. It's kind of normalized, I guess, yeah. <laughs> right? And then uh, asymmetrical risk, and then you can, and then you can hopefully get um, solid returns over compounding over a long period of time I, by taking I, those risks. I can't, I can't stop asking you questions about real estate yeah. uh, now, and this segues into the business questions that we have. Given what you just said, how important is it for somebody, real estate or any business, really, but to have a trusted advisor, a person you can shut the office door or call on the phone and go, I'm dealing with this thing. I've been in real estate forever, but this is kind of a new one for me. I think I know what I want to do. I just want to say it out loud to somebody. Do you have that person and how critical is it to have that person? So extremely critical. Okay. And the hardest thing is you have to really manage your ego. Um, for me, I'm lucky. Uh, I, you know, it's my wife. We work together. We're very different. Uh, she sees things very differently. Uh, I guess she she protects me fiercely, right? She, uh, that's what she does, and our kids. Um, and for a long time, I didn't appreciate it. I didn't really understand the need for it. Uh, but today, it's like a tremendous gratitude. Like, I'm like, okay, what do you think about that? My blind spots, to know your blind spots as you grow, super important, super. So um, I strongly recommend, it's hard to find, but taking effort to try to find that person, uh, very, very valuable. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Uh, okay, this one is about the stock market, and I know that you've shot social media videos about this, so let's get a, a longer form answer from you. Is current stock growth sustainable with so few companies carrying the load? Hmm. Yeah. I, uh, the, the, the answer is uh, I believe that the financial models that go into investing in stock mar markets is out the window because of that. It's not weighted anymore. You have the seven tech companies that went up in 2023 about, I think it was about 70 or 75%, um, which basically drove the entire market because let's just call it the S&P 500, mm -hmm. the 500 top companies. So you have that, and all of that is like future earnings of like speculation. And I always say every year in the stock market, there's a new thing, you know, artificial intelligence, electric vehicles, internet, iPhones. Every year it's a new, what is the thing? And everybody's running. Just now, I read in the paper today, um, Fisker, which is one of, that got tremendous funding, uh, is likely going to file for bankruptcy. It's an electric vehicle maker. And, uh, you know, I, today, the way it is, and even if it's Bitcoin too, by the way. Which was a question that we have. Right. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you about, about Bitcoin because I'm going to tell you a story about that. But I want to just finish with, about the stock market. You have to be very specific. I'm a, I'm a value investor. I really appreciate the long-term value investing, like basically like Warren Buffett. It's no to most things. It's no to most things. And then you buy quality and you manage it over a long period of time. Patience. Right? I had shot a video about not letting it, the business be immediate gratification. You have a strategy, long-term plan that you put away. And then you have fun on the side, do other things, whatever that fill you. Business ain't gonna do. It. It's like hard, 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 hard win. Yeah. <laughs> right. As I said, but um, but with the stock market, it is the same as going to a casino today on black and red. 
especially since there are much smarter people using AI, using tech to outsmart the entire um, investing market. And um, the way it's set up, it's this, the chips are stacked against you. You may feel good, just like a casino. You may have some wins and feel good about it, but make sure, I'm telling you, you will have losses too. Which is why, as you've said numerous times, real estate is your, is your play, is your go-to play. Real estate thought out with a plan because you control it, right? You're giving some financial advisor with a fancy suit and bow tie smiling, uh, you know, with his uh, hair gel hair and, you know, sounds good, <laughs> taking fees even though he makes money or doesn't make money, or you, or believe in yourself, or some guy. Yeah. Believe in yourself. I would just like to point out that all guys who wear hair gel are not untrustworthy. As a hair, <laughs> hair gel wearer, well, I'm I deeply offended. I can't say offended. anything with my, with my nice, uh, <laughs> nice head hair, but um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's freshly shorn, sure. though. I, li I like it. Yeah. Uh, so Bitcoin, you, you were going to talk about it. That was a question. We're taping this mid-March right now, yeah. and Bitcoin has been surging. Yes. Curious what you think. My son, at 17, slightly, when it was 17,000, went, went down. He mentioned it uh, and aggressively mentioned, please buy it at 26,000. And I said, Ellie, you're 100% right. It will go up. I know it will because they were very close to, to normalizing it, something called electronic traded fund, an ETF, which means that that retailers, more and more retailers would be buying into Bitcoin, which we're seeing now. I said, I know you're 100% right. However, however, am I actually, what am I actually going to do? Am I going to, it raises up, what, to 72, 60, 100? What point do I decide to sell? I don't know. That's, but I believe in buying and every month a little bit of cash flow comes hmm. pays your bills takes care of your stuff that doesn't necessarily meet the model everything that i do i'm thinking backwards towards does this is this a cow a cash cow something that i can take care of treat nicely and then and it'll produce some benefit right like something business. tangible tangible and physical and you, yeah right right so so yes and um do i believe it will go not today it's like seventy three thousand. Uh, do I believe it will go to 100000 Yes, I do. And am I investing? And I'm pretty sure about that. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that because it's put my money in place, A, B, C, or D. Um, I'm familiar with real estate. And, uh, you know, I have a whole infrastructure and system to work with that. So, uh, I, I, You know, I, I know your kids. And uh, they are, man, they are, they are ambitious and, like, smart and very confident you at least the older ones they don't mind telling you what to do in their teenage years with the wisdom they've accrued they're um yeah i uh um i didn't know i mean listen we have 11 kids now uh the only the only thing is um that's they're not me and they're not my wife right and i think that this world is 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 crazy you have to have grit. You have to, yeah. You have to have that, that confidence. Because and you got to do it. You got to do it alone. You got to pull those triggers alone when it's tough. So, so thank you. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah. I mean, I, I think I think my wife's stronger than me, but uh, we're we're different. Well, she has had eleven kids. That right. Is, uh, it's yeah. pretty strong. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you remember. Well, I'm sure you do because we're mm. friends. But I wore a, a empathy pregnancy belly for two <laughs> days course. and uh, wanted no part of it. So. Yeah, it's a uh, that's that that's wild. Um, but I think by the that, way, you need to wear the empathy pregnancy belly at this point. You know what? I you asked me about that a little bit ago, and I think I will. I think I'll do that, and uh, it's going to be exhausting. It is going to be exhausting. But yeah. who are we to complain about that? Uh, one more business question, and then a couple of the more personal things. Um, and this, I think, kind of puts everything you know into perspective and kind of frames this conversation. Uh, when it comes to investments, what are the main things that people should consider in terms of risk and being able to get your money out if you if you need to and investments being regulated? Like big picture, before you throw money into something, you know what what are the boxes you got to check off? I think I, I consider three things with with money. Money is a tool, um, and it's three boxes. It's it's business. It's charity, 
and it's family. It's it's enjoying things. Those are those. That's where money movement happens with a typical person. In in the business box, you again that vision and that clarity. You must have clarity. How if I make movement in this business widget or service, whatever it happens to be, um, it should. It should, if I follow this conservative plan, make money for, for my partners, for myself. You work backwards from that point. And if it doesn't, if you don't have clarity, if you don't have clarity, skip it. New ideas come every single day. There are new ideas coming every single day. It's just us. It's us. Most people don't want to make decisions. Most people don't want to take risk. Um, and that's and that and that's tough. And I'm a big proponent of people take again taking calculated risk. So you have to work on on being comfortable pulling triggers and discipline and discipline. Yeah, and di- and discipline. Um, and and like I said, that's why the super important that the business plan is super conservative. Most deals are no good. That's the truth. That's what it is. People are trying to manipulate you and and suck you into doing something. Or being involved with something, and and most of the time it's not for your family and not for you, because it's just it just doesn't work. Do you approach business deals now with based on what you just said with skepticism? So you're gonna buy property, you're gonna engage in some sort of partnership. Do you assume that the other person is kind of out to screw you, kind of out to get you? I don't I don't do that. I already know. There's another stage. Uh, alliances. I already know, and I've gone, and that's when I that's when uh, I started having some success. When y- you automatically go, and I have this in the beginning of conversations, that we're sitting on a business conversation, which means in its nature, I have to figure out how everybody's going to make a lot of money. Mm. I already say that from minute one. How? Wh- why are we going to do? No one's motivated if you, we're not going to make money. Everyone's going to make money. Bottom line, and I'm not. Um, I'm not skeptical, but I don't, I'll give you an example. I'm closing on a deal in a few weeks. There's a broker package. I don't even look at that broker package. I start from scratch, zero. And with my team that we've put together, that I trust, we create an income, expense, profit, our model. Based on our model, are we willing to offer that price? Yes, we put an offer. I don't that's our due diligence. We're supposed to be sophisticated. So that's the, the vision. And the visions can be smaller and then grow over time. Or you can be, you know, I'm a big fan of dreaming big. Just dream big. And, right, Les Brown says, uh, shoot for the moon, maybe you'll hit the stars. Sure. Right? I'm a big, big fan of that. Um, you know, like even, I mean, do I think that Elon Musk is going to go to Mars? I don't know. He He's does. One, right. He, maybe. Right. Or maybe. I, mean, I guess right. he does, Right. And then, you know, but what's SpaceX doing? It's making the low orbit satellites and making, making money off that. Yeah. It's, you know. Uh, okay, so two more. And you mentioned this earlier. Do you give back to charity? You mentioned the charity piece. So uh, somebody wants to know, do you give back to charity? So we have, we have two foundations. And the answer is yes. So there's the YMP Family Foundation, uh, which is... What I find with charities, it's funny, I went to a dinner uh, about two months ago, and I'm a strange guy, so I, so the, it's public knowledge, all not-for-profits, you know, where they allocate and how they spend. So this particular charity raised millions of dollars, but then they had like 40% for executives and executive pay and all this stuff. I was like, thank you, but no thank you. The real thing, I think, right, is food and water. So there's, there's families, right, directly you can give them that are suffering. That are, so that's important to offer myself that, you know, these people need food. Here, here's food. And, you know, and people and kids need to get ed- educated. And so those are like food and education. Those are important. But also we have our passion project. It's called Neighborhood Farms USA. It's a national. Um, we create gardens. In, in schools and workforce housing, in many different areas to try to educate 
again, on a national level, to try to educate uh, people about healthy eating. My wife was very sick growing up, and, uh, and she stumbled upon the medicine of fruits and vegetables. And uh, this is our passion project, this is our not-for-profit, um, and it's neighborhoodfarmsusa.org. And I was going to mention that if you didn't, but you nailed yeah. it. Excellent, and people should go check that out yeah. because it is wonderful. You can see, you, you can see, we're building a lot of a lot of gardens, a yeah. lot, and uh, and educating. Yeah, it's it's awesome. Um, I'm I'm privileged to be part of it, uh, and I'm. It's just great that w- what you guys are doing to help people yeah. across the country. Last one, and this is a heavy duty one. This was mm. this is like the sit under a tree and think <laughs> about this one. What is consciousness? <laughs> Uh, yeah, because I know that I, you know, it's interesting. Uh, the podcast has evolved. Uh, a lot of business practical tips and things like that. I do have a deeply spiritual side to, to myself. And um, and I think about that. My And maybe I've said it on the show, but my grandfather, uh, he was uh, he was here in Mount Sinai, Miami Beach, and he got sick. His just my wife and I were here, and the rest of his family was in New York. And he told me, uh, eyes are piercing blue. And I know, Dave, you've heard the story. And I wondered this. This is about 12 years ago. It was about 12 years ago, and he's looking at me. And I said, Grandpa, I said, tell me something. He's like, there is no past. There is no present. There is no future. There's no me. There is no you. There's no table. There's no chairs. Everything, it's one. So he's basically like... That's what consciousness is. It's basically aligning all 8 billion of us humans on, and that's fully what common denominator is. Uh, Looking at, it's what, we are a product in our functionality of what we focus on, right? We're sitting there focusing all day on the negative things. Why can't we focus on the things, simple things, right? The things that unite us, food, Music, right? Um, it's funny. I had a party for my for my son, and I had a simple pin, right? You saw the pin. It said, uh, "Be a nice human." I could tell you, tens of people came to me, and it's like, "Wow, such a simple concept." Be a nice human. I would love to trademark that. Actually, thinking about that now, right? <laughs> no, because you just said it out loud. The race is on. I know on the race is on. Yeah, but but that. Um, Life's super complicated, and everybody, Ugh. nobody wants to talk about it, and and I don't care anymore. So I just say what I'm gonna say, and you know what? If you say what you say, then at least you know who your friends are, I guess, right? So um, I think consciousness is uniting on simple and common ground, and um, and no judgment, no judgment of self, and no judgment of others. Well, thanks so much for this. I, I'm sure people got a ton of takeaway personally and professionally. Uh, one of the topics that we very briefly talked about was flipping homes. And next week, you're going to be chatting with Justin Colby, and he is an expert in that. In fact, he's the founder of the Science of Flipping podcast and the Science of Flipping coaching program. He's a real estate investor that's flipped over 1,500 homes in multiple markets. And the coaching program that he has helps people launch, grow, and scale their investing business. I'm going to really enjoy Enjoy your conversation with him because, as you've said numerous times, that's not your go-to jam, flipping, right. but it is his. So it'll be cool to hear you guys talk about that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I have flipped, I have flipped homes in the past, um, almost lost a couple times. So it was, you know, it was me getting educated, uh, but. Um, there is a place for it. There's definitely a place for it, and I am looking forward to that. Yeah. So yeah. if you want to make sure that you see that or hear that, and if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook um, or listening on any audio platform, please do all the things you're supposed to do, like, share, subscribe, comment. Uh, I know Moshe would really appreciate it. The team would really appreciate it. Yeah. And that's a way to make sure that uh, you never miss an episode. Any final words, my friend? Well, it's like I said, I, uh, I always enjoy having that break, thank you, and uh, going in the guest chair. But again, that's always the goal, is to give uh, specific tips. If you want to take it, you want to take it or not. But hopefully we help people. That's the bottom line, so. I'm sure we did. Yeah, thank you so much, Dave. You got it.